13th Annual Real Abilities Film Festival, New York. Opening night. Joy Levitt, Chief Executive Officer, Marlene Meyerson, JCC Manhattan. Welcome to the 13th Annual Real Abilities Film Festival and to the first ever Real Abilities Drive-In. I am Rabbi Joy Levitt, the CEO of the Marlene Meyerson, JCC Manhattan. We're so proud to bring you our Real Abilities Film Festival in a safe and accessible way. Tonight is the first fully accessible drive-in, and we want to thank Rooftop Films for all their support and the Queen's Drive-In as well. After our festival had to turn virtual last year in mid-March, we learned that this format in many ways is even more accessible. People wrote to us to thank us for bringing the festival into their home, as they had always wanted to attend but did not have access. Real Ability raises the bar in accessible screenings and presents all of our films with audio description, open captions, and virtually so that absolutely everyone can access. I just want to also say that as the first program to pivot online back in April of last year, Real Abilities not only told us what we could do to make our film festival more accessible, but opened up all the possibilities for the entire JCC staff to imagine what could be done in this virtual world. So we are all in, in the debt of the Real Abilities team. We're so proud to bring this community together this week virtually and in person to share these films and stories. This week, we will celebrate diversity and inclusion by highlighting America's largest and most unrepresented minority group, people with disabilities. Real Abilities puts into the spotlight those who are so often pushed into the corner. More importantly, we bring the community together to embrace and celebrate our shared humanity and the love of the arts. Every film will be followed by a conversation with the community, and we encourage you to participate. Honoree Itzhak Perlman, violinist, disability advocate. Tonight, it is my great personal honor and our honor as a JCC to honor one of the most celebrated musicians of our time and undoubtedly the most world-renowned violinist of my lifetime. I should say my father's favorite musician of all time. And more importantly, in our context, an outspoken advocate for disability rights the great, the one and only Itzhak Perlman. Now, Itzhak, I remember when you won the Genesis Prize and um, the JCC was one of the recipients of, of, of that prize because of our, our, um, our disabilities work. And, and you and I had lunch together at Russ and Daughters at, at the Jewish Museum. And you told this story about, about what it means to fly on oh. an airplane and how hard it is to get to the bathroom and what it means to stay in a hotel and, and not be able to close the blinds. I, I'd, love, I'd love you to share that with everyone because I, I think people don't realize to your exact point, on some level, you look very capable and yet there are so many um, impediments to your being able to navigate the world. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a part of my life. And, uh, you know, one of my greatest dreams, one of my dreams is to have a convention of interior de de decorators and designers so that they would know what it means to design a space that is accessible to everybody. Now, the thing is that, you know, we have this ADA, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, and in a sense, it sort of makes, uh, architects lazy because they look at the book of codes and they say uh -huh. that code I'm putting it in you know I have to put a bar in this room blah 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 and that's it and they don't realize that everybody has a different disability you know not and that you know disability doesn't mean you know we all have the same you know I can't move this way or I can't move that way everybody has a version so I need more uh, shall we say people with more imagination to do that. That's why I was thinking of, you know, one of those conventions where everybody can really talk about what can, what can improve the lives. You mentioned, uh, of course, uh, airplanes. Uh, forget about getting into the bathroom in an airplane. 
So the thing that, that a lot of people do who are disabled, let's say with, you know, when they can't move or, you know, they're bound to, bound to a wheelchair and so on, they just make plans so that they don't have to use the bathrooms because those but, bathrooms- But Itzhak, you travel to Tokyo, you travel to Israel. These yeah. are not short flights. Yes. This is hard. It's, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's yeah. Challenge. I love your idea of bringing together a group of, um, and they're really disruptors. You want to you want to get a group of people together who are who are design thinking, you know, and not looking at what the rules are, but you know, how can we? Is there a place? Is there a concert hall that you feel like has done this well, or Some do you have. face challenges all the time? Some of them have. Uh, and some of them haven't, you know, and it's a question of <clears throat> the problem is that older concert halls, you know, I always love this, this idea that the reason that this concert hall is not accessible because it was designed 60, 70 years ago. When nobody had a disability. Exactly. <laughs> so I see, so for me, that's such a, such a lame excuse for something, right. not be, you know, not to be, and of course, <clears throat> question of disability has to do with, I mean, question of accessibility has to do with what, what does it mean to be accessible? Does it mean that I, you know, I, I'm a great veteran of elevator and garbage, ele garbage elevators and back elevators to get into a place. That for me is, is not particularly uh, Helpful. appetizing, an appetizing thing about getting into a space. You know, I would love to get into a space that, you know, you, that everybody gets into a space. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, so again, that has to do with how much the architects are aware of, of this, you know, of course, obviously, uh, for me, aircrafts is, is, is a shame. It's a shame. I mean, because maybe people are not thinking, you know, if I had two, if you can sacrifice two seats and make the bathrooms on an airplane so that you can actually get in there with a chair. Yeah. What, what, what would, you know, what would be so bad about that? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, and then of course, going into hotels, my favorite story <laughs> is that, you know, I'm always looking before checking into a hotel these days, I always ask my assistant to ask them to send me photographs of bathrooms to see if it's something, because just to say that it's, that it's ADA compliant is not enough. You know, it can still be pretty lousy. So, and, and what sometimes you, you have like a rectangular shower with, and they have a seat on one end, but on the other end, there are these faucets. So there is, if you sit there, oh you God. reach the faucet on the other hand, you know, things like that, which are so simple and logical are not being done. And this, and we're not talking about, you know, like one of those cheap hotels. We're talking about fancy schmancy hotels. I assume, I would hope so. <laughs> you know, it's still, and there's still, and then for me, it's because of a lack of planning and a lack of real awareness of what it means to have a disability. So I will tell you that there are a lot of people listening to us, and I suggest that that Real Abilities um, take on a letter writing campaign to the to these um, airlines to to um, to bring this to their attention in a very powerful way. Let's get this done. This seems like it could get done, right? Get easily done. I mean, right now, for example, another, another interesting thing, the seats on an airplane, when you have the elbow, you know, when you lean with your elbow, yeah. some of them, some of them can lift up and so that you can slide into the seat. But right. some don't. Can't. And right. so as a result, if you are, let's say in one of those, what you call an aisle chair, which is of course the most ridiculous thing. And yet you have to be uh, uh, Miss America to fit in <laughs> that aisle chair because <laughs> that, you know, so you get into the aisle chair and then you try to, they try to fit you into the seat and that, and that, that rest, that elbow rest does not move. So that means they have to That's grab true. you, you know, and then put you in there. So it's, it's ridiculous. And there has is it, a reason. Has it gotten why. better? It's like, have things gotten better since you were young? It has not. It has not because uh, I'll tell you, it all depends on the airline. You know, when I travel, I try, but of course, to no avail to figure out what is the model of the airplane 
so that it would be accessible. But then, of course, you you get the model, and then they change aircraft on you. <laughs> so the whole thing the whole thing is canceled. So it's it's a uh, it's a challenge. It's a real challenge. So let me ask you how or if that challenge gets brought into your playing is it's probably a dumb question in the sense that everything about you I'm sure comes into into your music but I'm curious about the impact of the all the challenges that you face um, on your on your um, on your extraordinary talent the playing the playing has nothing to do with anything nothing. One, I'm on the stage that's fine that's it once I can get there you know these days I have even like uh, I have people build ramps for me so that when I get on the stage you know I'm in a scooter when I get on the stage I just can scoot onto the podium and that's it and then once I play everything is fine, you know. Has there ever been a challenge when you're playing, when something has not been fine, when you've had to stop, when you've had to move? Uh, I have, I, you know, the, 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 the regular challenge of breaking a string, for example, yeah. to stop and change a violin, but there's nothing specifically to, uh, you know, I once actually, a couple of times, I actually went on stage and, and I, I tripped and I fell. And uh, that was, exciting shall we say and, 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 and everybody actually was more excited than i was I'm I bet. Just, just let me just let me get up and then i'll continue with that and that happened like three or four times during my career because you remember these things sure and, of course uh, and but but again it has nothing to do with you know what i do for a living which is being a musician i mean what's extraordinary is to listen to these two parts of you of you you, you, you don't deny your disability. You in fact are a disabilities advocate for huge numbers of people. And yet the music is, is separate, it's pure. It's so the, the music is separate and the challenge, especially when I first started playing is to make sure that the music was separate because a lot of people had a tendency to associate the music with it. You know, they were always, if you read some of my earlier reviews they would always mention the fact that you know I was walking on stage with crutches with great um, amount of effort, and then we then he sat down, and then everything was forgotten, and they they, they needed to do that. Yeah. And as they got used to me, yeah, nobody does that anymore. So as yeah, nobody does that anymore. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I, I had a couple of people uh, write me something saying, "Gee, I saw you the other day, the first time live, and I did not realize that you were walking on crutches." You know, because they, because they never, they've never seen me before. Wow! So, so, wow! So, so then that now everybody has forgotten it. So now it's my job to remind them. You see, you know, I mean, despite the fact that I have a disability. I am able to prove what I can do because I am able to separate, I would say separate your abilities from your disabilities. It's a separate thing. And, and now you're teaching, right? You're teaching, oh, well, I've been teaching. at Juilliard and at the Perlman <laughs> Music Center. I wonder, um, you must be an extraordinary mentor for typically developing musicians, but are there, are there musicians with disabilities that you work with or that you know, you have been able to inspire? Well, uh, not specifically, but, you know, I've, I've worked with a, a few people, not a few, just actually one or two uh, mm -hmm. that has disability. And, if, and then again, the important thing is I cannot do what some people did to me, which is I have to look at the talent. You have right. to look at the talent. Right. Right? Talent is there. I don't care if this person is standing on his head or her head or in a chair or not in a chair or whatever it is. The talent is for me the most important thing at, to be a judge, you know, to be a proper judge as to what's going on. I mean, the, to, to say, oh, well, you know, it's not so good, but because of the disability, it's good enough. That would Can't, be terrible. You cannot, Doesn't work. Do that. Right. you cannot do that. Right. Yeah. Well, um, the talent is definitely there. <laughs> um, and I and I have to say that you have been um, an inspiration to me personally, um, to all of the people that I know that are um, listening here. When I close my eyes and listen to you play, I am transported. And I I learned that from my dad, as I said in the introduction, 
you were by far his favorite um, musician. You combined um, his love for Israel, um, his love for the violin, and his love of the music that you chose to play. So every time I listen to you, I feel like I am honoring his memory. So thank you, and thank you for all that you do and all that you bring to, to, um, to the world. And thank you for your work, particularly in asserting the rights of differently abled people to be seen um, and heard. Well, thank you very, very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Itzhak. As New Yorkers, we are strong and we are resilient and we are committed to doing what's right. We have a responsibility to share these stories and I wanna thank everyone who made this possible, especially during these challenging times. We wanna thank the mayor's office for people with disabilities, the mayor's office of media and entertainment and our good friend, the Manhattan Borough president. All of them have been staunch supporters of real ability since its inception. Now, please welcome Commissioner Del Castillo's mayor, Office of Media and Entertainment, and the Commissioner Khaleesi, Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities. Words of welcome, Anne Del Castillo, Commissioner, Mayor's Office for Media and Entertainment. Victor Khaleesi, Commissioner, Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. Hello and welcome to the 13th Annual Real Abilities Film Festival. I'm Anne Del Castillo, Commissioner of the New York City Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. Over the years, Real Abilities has set the standard for diverse and inclusive programming, spotlighting stories by and about people with disabilities, and in the process, raising awareness and engaging important conversations about our shared humanity. This year's festival features a groundbreaking musical film and recognizes the legendary musician Yitzhak Perlman. I want to congratulate all of this year's filmmakers and, of course, Rabbi Joy Levitt, Isaac Zablocki, and the entire team at Real Abilities. We are so proud to support your work and celebrate the talent and programming that make New York City the creative capital of the world. And to all of you joining us, thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to opening night of the 2021 Real Abilities Film Festival. It's such an honor to be here and be able to deliver this message. We're able to do this virtually and for the first time at a drive-in movie theater. How cool is that? I wanna thank Real Abilities for making sure that people with disabilities get these high quality films, that they're for people with disabilities, by people with disabilities, in front of the camera and behind the camera. It's such an honor to be able to support this for over 10 years and look forward to doing this in the future. Everyone, I can't stress how important it is for you to get vaccinated, to wear your mask, keep your social distancing, and wash your hands. We're almost through this, and by doing all that, we'll be able to get together in 2022. So grab your popcorn and enjoy the show. We are proud to thank our sponsors, especially for tonight, our opening night supporters, Pfizer. I don't need to tell you how honored we are to have Pfizer as a long-term supporter of the festival but especially in this year when they have done so much to keep so many healthy and safe. To make this an accessible festival, we rely on the support of individuals, partners, and sponsors. Please take a look at the full list of sponsors on our partner page. We'd especially like to highlight Warner Media, Vimeo, our conversation sponsor, and Chapel Haven Schleifer Center, sponsoring Monday's comedy night on the JCC rooftop. As music is one of the themes for tonight, we are proud to have with us an amazing performer and activist. Legally blind, Lachi is an ardent advocate for greater disability, visibility and representation in the media. But most of all, she is an amazing singer. Please welcome Lachi. Performance by Lachi, recording artist, songwriter, author, model, and diversity inclusion advocate. Hey y'all, it's me Lachi, and I am so honored to be performing at Real Abilities. In fact, when I first stepped into what I really wanted to be, which was a blind entertainer, not afraid of telling people she was blind, uh, the first folks I met were people from Real Abilities. 
arms spread open, so excited to bring me in and welcome me into this world of entertainment, into this world of standing in front of disabilities. And one of the things I love the best about Real Abilities is that they're showcasing people with disabilities not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera. I mean, the writers, the directors, the editors. No one gives credit like Real Abilities does, and that's why I'm so excited to be performing here for y'all today. So I'm gonna sing a song called High or Low, it's a song that, you know, we have our highs and we have our lows, but through it all, we are very strong and we never forget who we are. And that's why this community is so large, so strong, and just holding on. So I'm really hoping you guys enjoy this one. I wrote it with a producer named Yonetro, and I am performing it here at Positive Exposure, an amazing art space here in Harlem. And in fact, behind me is this amazing painting the Wall of Love by Marcos Santini. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention this wonderful tactile jacket that was made for me by Barbara Beccio. All different fabrics, all tactile. So I really hope that you all enjoy this song, High or Low. I'm real, real excited to perform for y'all. Here we go. Ask me what I'm thinking With so many things trying me And so many keep prying If there's anything I've noticed If I know anything I know this You show me that I'm wanted You show me that I got you Wherever you go You got me high or low Wherever you go You got me high or low jokes, you know, just how to light my smoke, you know. you allow me to be a lesson, you allow me to learn a lessons, and even when I get abrasive, well that is when you get embrace if you show me that I'm wanted, you show me that I got you, wherever you go, oh, 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 you got me high or low, oh, 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 oh. wherever you go. Oh, 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 oh,
thank you all so much. This was so fun. Really great to spend some time with you all. A huge thank you to Real Abilities. Thank you to Rick Guidotti of Positive Exposure. Marco Santini for this amazing painting. Yanetro for that wonderful production that he co-wrote with me. And of course, Barbara Beccio for this perfect, awesome jacket. I hope you all have a real, real great night. Find me, Lachi Music. I'll be your friend. Good night. I would like to thank the people who work behind the scenes to make this festival happen. Our amazing AV team, Matt Temkin and Sam Brunswick, who have worked tirelessly to turn this festival virtual. And of course, the Real Abilities team, Yara Kedem, the Associate Director, Real, Real Abilities International Director, Morgan Magid, our Program Manager, Miranda Lee, our Film Administrative Associate and Partnership Coordinator, our PR and publicists, Denise Sinlov and Stephen Rafel at Required Viewing, Karima Parton, the production manager, Shelby Elbert, our director of leadership gifts, Melissa Reagan, the director of institutional giving, Jessica Epstein and the entire design and marketing team, Anita Altman, our festival founder, and of course, the one and only Isaac Zablocki, our festival founder and director. And a huge thanks to all of our volunteers and interns. I want to thank three amazing women, along with their significant others, who make real abilities happen year round. I have never seen such committed lay leaders. Our co chairs, Michelle Fag, Lynn, and Lynn Bartner Wiesel, and our advisory council chair and key supporter, Jordana Manzano. They, together with Heidi Lorensky, will be honored at this year's JCC benefit. Lynn Bartner Wiesel, Festival Co Chair. Michelle Fig, Festival Co Chair. Hi, I'm Lynn Bartner Wiesel, talking to you from my closet because it's the quietest place in the house. Um, the silver lining for this past year of COVID 19 being quarantined is now we all know what it's like to be isolated and disabled. What I've been trying to remind people every year at opening night is that we are all humans on the spectrum of life. I'm honored to be a co-chair person for this film festival, more so every year, as well as being on the selection committee and watching hundreds of amazing films. I wanted to thank the selection committee who fought grappled, yelled, and shared their opinions to make this awesome film festival. Like a smorgasbord, there's something for everyone. We would also like to thank the following supporters. FYI, Achilles International, Barclays, Lights Camera Access, the Rita and Stanley Kaplan Family Foundation, the UJA Federation of New York, and some new supporters. Nancy Collin, Sharon Bunkin, Wendy Barish, Ronnie Raymond. And of course, there are so many more of you. We are sincerely grateful. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Michelle Fag, a co-chair of the Real Abilities Film Festival. I've loved being involved with Real Abilities and watching all the movies because it's given me such great insight into worlds I know so little about. Through these films, I get to see and feel what life can be like with cerebral palsy, autism, blindness, missing limbs, and so many other differences. However, I'm also constantly moved by the stories that show the universal themes of love, loss, trial, error, abandonment, consequence, and acceptance that are so prominent in these films. We laugh, we cry, and we empathize because we realize with all their differences, the amazing characters in our films are trying to find love, experience happiness, and achieve their goals in the same way we all are. I wanna thank our advisory committee members who champion the festival and provide invaluable guidance throughout the planning process. These accessible films will travel to over 20 cities around the globe through our international program and hundreds of corporations and educational institutions through real education, 
an educational program. We want to thank our supporters, including the J.E. and Z.B. Butler Foundation, New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, New York State Council on the Arts, Black Magic, who are providing awards and equipment support, J.P. Morgan Chase, who are designing our upcoming streaming site through their Force for Good program, and Winston Prep School. I also want to thank some amazing individuals who helped make this festival happen. Rebecca and Bennett Lindenbaum, Barbara Dopkin, and the legendary Laureen Arbus. Enjoy the evening. Isaac Zablocki, festival director and co-founder. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm Isaac Zablocki. I'm director and co-founder of the Real Abilities Film Festival. I first want to echo the amazing thanks to all of our supporters, um, but especially to our amazing team who do amazing work with us at the JCC year-round, to Yara, Morgan, and Miranda, and tonight Karima for stepping on board and joining us. We stand here 30 years after the ADA was put into place. Um, we're here to create cultural change. We're part of a revolution in disability representation in film, and tonight's film, Best Summer Ever, is a perfect example of that. We have seen this year in our selections and in our submissions that a true revolution is going on. We have watched how the industry is starting to change, but don't worry, our job is far from being done. We're grateful to all of those who have brought us to this point um, and are honored to feature as our closing night a film called Not Going Quietly about activist Adi Barkan and we'll have there before the film um, the legend Temple Grandin. Please join us throughout the week and for closing night. Tonight's film, Best Summer Ever, is being presented in the perfect setting for it. A high school musical can only be associated, in my mind, with a drive-in. Furthermore, as the first fully inclusive feature film, we are proud to make this the first fully accessible drive-in experience. What I love about this film is not that it just has a diverse cast, but the entire filmmaking process is mixed with people with disabilities. At a time when diversity and inclusion is on all of our minds, this film is revolutionary in its inclusivity. It's not about inclusion, it simply is. Enjoy the film and stay for the Q&A and a special premiere of a short documentary right after the screening. Thank you for joining us. Hey everybody, hi Real Abilities. Uh, this is Amy Brenneman sending you a little message from Los Angeles and welcome to the premiere of Best Summer Ever. I so wish I could be there with you tonight. You are in for such an incredible evening of joy and badassery and a cast that will knock your socks off. So have a blast. I will be thinking of you and I am so overjoyed to see this baby unfurled in the world.